In this video, I'm gonna show you how I paint super smooth results by thinning my paints. Hello everyone, and welcome to another brushstroke painting guide. So as you heard from the intro there, the topic for this video is going to be how to thin your paints. And the reason for making this video is because the question I get asked most of all, without fail, is how do I get my paints so smooth? And to be honest, it's something I've always struggled to answer because I've kind of put it down to a trial and error thing that I've developed. But it's got me thinking lately because I must be doing something over and over again to replicate the same results. So there should be key characteristics and things that I'm looking for in order to produce that result. So what I'm gonna try and do is explore that in this video for you now, and hopefully you'll be able to replicate that and get the same results that I do. So let's start off then with trying to establish exactly what is the problem we're trying to fix. So I have a model piece here, which I've just uh, primed with some surface primer from Vallejo, and I'm going to paint the left-hand side with unthinned paint straight from the pot. So let's do that really quickly now. Okay then, it's dry, and as expected, it's not looking too great, is it? Let's be honest, it's a mess. It's got clogged up details, it's not smooth, there's brush marks, and it's really bumpy. So there must be something I can do which is going to improve that paint finish. And if ever you've asked a question online, you'll get the answer, and that answer is thin your paints. But it doesn't tell you the full story, does it? It doesn't tell you why that would help, it doesn't tell you what you need to do, it doesn't tell you how much you need to thin it. So let's have a look at some of those questions, starting off with the first one, how will it help? So the easiest way to answer that is to show you what the end result would be. Now through the magic of video editing, we can jump ahead and see what the end result of thinning your paints is compared to what we've just done with the unthinned paint. Now obviously this comparison is night and day. You've got the unthinned paint on the left hand side which has clogged details and is gloopy and bumpy. And then by just adding water to exactly the same paint on the right hand side, I've been able to achieve a clean, smooth and flawless finish. So we need to work out why, what's happening here. So for this, we're gonna go and have a look at a bit of theory. So let's imagine the profile of the model piece that we just painted. And then what do we know? So when I painted on the unthinned paint, it went on really thick and it filled in those grooves. And then when it dried, it dried really uneven and blobby and still filled in those details. By comparison then, on the right hand side, when I painted that in with exactly the same paint, but this time with added water, when that dried, it's the added water that actually evaporates out and allows the paint that's left to shrink down and effectively follow the contours and the shape of the model, leaving a smoother, thinner layer of paint. Right, well, that's brilliant. So adding water just helps the paint shrink down and follow the contours of the model. Excellent. But wait, how much do I actually need to thin the paint in order to get the result that I want? Okay, well, that's our next question then. And to answer this one, we're gonna to need to think a little bit more about what the characteristics of the paint are and how adding water changes them. So for an example, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some water on the back of my hand here, and then I'm gonna get some gold paint and I'm going to mix that into the water. So I've chosen the metallic paint on purpose because it's the flex in them which will show the characteristic that I'm looking to demonstrate. And that characteristic is movement. So as I've added paint to water or water to paint, um, it's increased the movement that the paint has. It's easier to flow. It's obviously become more of a liquid. It's, uh, it's less viscous. It's fluid. Well, it literally is now a fluid. So as you can see, as I'm interacting with it with my brush, the paint doesn't stop moving the minute I stop moving my brush. It still reacts, it settles, it flows. And it's that movement and that characteristic that is very important when you're thinning your paints because it's how much of that movement and how fluid you want it to be that you need to consider in terms of how much you need to thin it. Because depending on what you want to use the paint for, you need to have a different level of movement to your paint. Right, okay, 
what am I going on about? How does movement of your paint affect how you use it? Uh, okay, let's go back to our little drawing board and we'll talk a little bit more theory. Right, let's imagine that we've got an incline and that we take our unthinned paint and we put a big dollop of it at the top. What would happen to it? Nothing, that's right, it's static. It wouldn't move, it would stay there. It has no movement. So let's go to the other extreme then, and on the same incline, let's put a big dollop of water. What would you expect that to do? That's right, you'd expect it to flow down, you'd expect it to move, you'd expect it to run down to the bottom. Which must mean then that the optimum for our smooth paint finish must lie between these two extremes. Well, that's fairly obvious, I hear you say, but bear with me, because this will tell us a little bit more about the characteristics that we need to be looking out for, for this particular sweet spot. Specifically, we know that we want it to have movement, we want it to be able to flow, we want it to be able to settle, and we want it to shrink down when it dries. We don't want it to be able to be heaped up or be able to hold brush strokes, we don't want it to be static, we don't want it to clump up, we don't want to be able to make peaks out of it. So already we're getting an idea of the collective characteristics we need this paint to have and we need to be looking out for. So, in my mind, a good way of summing all this up, all these different characteristics, is to consider this range of movement to be the paint's speed. So on the left hand side, we would have slow paint moving all the way over to the right to the other end of the scale, which would be fast paint. So this is where I hope you'll start to see where the different speed of a paint has different uses. So for example, slow paint is static and doesn't move. So that's really good for dry brushing, for building up texture, for stippling, that kind of thing. And then on the right hand side, you've got your fast paints. These are paints that want to only settle into the recesses and run off the top surfaces. So they're your shades and your contrast paints, for example. And then somewhere in between, we've got that point which is perfect for smooth, solid base coat colors, which is the one that we're looking for for this video. Okay, so now we know in order to achieve that smooth finish that we're after, we're going to need to thin the paint and that will allow it to shrink down and follow the contours when it dries. The consequence of thinning the paint will make it become faster and flow easier. Now there are actually another couple of consequences that we do need to consider. So the first one, if you remember when we were looking at the gold paint, was as I added the gold paint to a large quantity of water, it dissipated out into the water, so it actually spread out and became quite, quite a thin covering across a large area. And you can imagine if this gold paint were to dry, the final result would be quite patchy and it'd just be a lot of the surface underneath showing through and just a few sort of patches of the gold. And essentially the result of that means the faster and the thinner we make the paint, the less coverage and the less opaque the paint is going to be. And that's going to be our trade-off. So to get the smooth solid finish we want, we're going to need to apply multiple thin coats to get that coverage. And then obviously because we're adding more water, it means that the drying time for each layer is also going to take longer. Now interestingly, that lower opacity level you get the thinner you make your paints is actually really good for blending and glazing, but that's a topic for another video. Right, I think it's time we had a look at what these characteristics look like on some real paint. So I'm going to start off with the slow end of our scale and look at some unthinned paint. And as you can see, it's static. It has no motion. I can heap it and it'll stay in one place. I can put grooves in it and you can just tell there's very little moisture in it, which is going to shrink when it dries. And then in comparison on the other end of the scale, I've thinned the same paint down so now it's more like a wash. And you can see the difference, it's really fast. It just flows so easily, it reacts to every motion I'm making with my brush. It wants to spring back and settle. And you can just tell it's going to flow into all of those recesses. There's just no way I can heap this up. And now for the middle one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some water to some unthinned paint and find this midpoint. So what I'm doing is I'm just pulling the paint down and with the water I'm mixing them together and I'm looking for that moment where it just starts to spring back and has that movement. There, do you see that where it sort of pulls back on itself? So that's how you want it to be behaving and then it's a case of trying to get it as thick as possible while still retaining that movement and that settling as that will mean it will shrink enough to be smooth when it dries but still opaque enough to limit the number of coats that we're going to need to apply to get a solid finish. Basically something like that. Okay so let's see what happens when we add those three speeds of paint to a surface. 
Starting off with the slow paint, it goes on thick, it doesn't move and it just doesn't settle at all so you know it's just not going to shrink down when it dries. The medium paint though does have that movement that we're looking for and you can see it settle. It also runs slightly down the contour of my hand while still keeping a decent coverage. And lastly the really fast paint, you can see it's really thin and actually all it wants to do is run off my hand. Now if these three different speeds of paint look familiar then that's good because that's exactly what we were thinking they should look like when we were talking about how a paint would behave on an incline. And I think you'll agree they're actually a very good match. The slow is staying exactly where it is, the middle one has decent coverage but has moved a bit and then the fast one has tried to flow straight off the side of my hand. Okay then, it's time to put everything we've been talking about into practice. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some paint straight from the pot as I did before, but this time I'm going to put it onto my palette. Now having a palette will give me that extra control and will allow me to mix in the water to find that consistency that I want. Speaking of consistency, let's remind ourselves of the checklist of characteristics we're looking for to get that optimum smooth finish. We're looking for the paint to have that movement. It needs to be able to flow and settle. It has to be fast enough so that it can't be heaped and you can't leave grooves or brush marks in it anymore. But we don't want it to be so fast that it's actually transparent. We want to get it as opaque as possible. So that way we can limit the number of coats that we're gonna to need to apply to get to that solid finish. Okay, so let's add some water to the palette now so that I can use that to mix in with the paint. I do recommend actually that you have separate dots of water next to each paint so that you can use it to um, mix each without any contamination. Okay then, so I'm gonna repeat exactly the same process that I've just done. So I'm gonna start taking water and I'm gonna start mixing that into the paint by pulling it down just so you have a little bit of paint to work with at once. So I'm gonna start keep mixing that water and that paint together until I find that point where I see that the paint is just starting to move and try and spring back. That's the magic point that we're looking for. So it has that movement and you can just feel that the paint is starting to settle rather than heap up. And then it's a case of just trying to find that, that point where it's just starting to move so it's as opaque as possible, but it settles and doesn't hold any brush marks anymore. Okay, I think that's about right. I can't put any grooves in it anymore and it definitely still has that slight movement to it. So I reckon it's time to give that a bit of a test. Now testing is the final part to all of this process. It's key that you always check to see how it's gonna react before you put it anywhere near your model. This is your safety net, just in case it's not quite how you want it to be. So this is behaving really nicely, I'm quite happy with that. So it's time to start putting it onto the model. And straight away you can tell it's completely different to how it was when I was doing it straight from the pot. The paint is obviously a lot more like a liquid, it um, is flowing on a lot smoother, you can feel it going into the grooves and around the details. Now obviously the compromise here is it's not as opaque as it was straight from the pot, so you can still see the black underneath, but that's not a problem because we know when it dries it's going to shrink down and it will form a smoother finish. So obviously straight away we can tell that we are going to need to do a, an additional coat to this, but already I can tell this is going to be so much better, so much smoother. Um, right, okay, just running out of paint there, so I'm just going to mix a little bit more up. So now I know what the consistency needs to be, I can get that feel quite quickly, and I can just load up my brush and carry on painting. One thing to note is um, brush control. So now we've got the paint flowing cleanly and smoothly from the brush. The key thing here is that you want to have a very light touch to the brush, so you don't want to be pressing it hard against the surface the paint should flow very cleanly and very smoothly like it's an ink straight from the brush. So all you need to actually do is touch the bristles to the surface and the paint will do the work for you. Because it now has that movement and because it has that speed, it is just flowing from the brush and I'm not pressing it in any way to try and force it onto the model. Right, okay, I think this is getting near to the first coat completed. Um, it's a bit patchy, but obviously that's to be expected. Um, I'm just gonna fill in the whole details a little bit more. Um, what I'm thinking actually is I could do with it being a little bit faster, so it flows into these recesses a bit more, a bit more like a wash, I guess. So I'm just gonna mix up a bit of a thinner mix and then hopefully it'll settle into those gaps a little bit easier. Um, I'm gonna check it on the back of my hand, obviously, before I do that. And uh, yeah, that seems fine. So let's get that into those little gaps. Okay, yeah, that seems to be going in quite well now. That's what I expected. 
Right, so now there's a little bit excess on my brush. I'm just going to take that off onto my palette. And then with the brush a little bit drier, I can just take off the excess so that I can smooth down the surface a little bit. Again, this is just to try and even out the coverage across the surface so it dries as smooth and cleanly as possible. Okay, so that's coat one done. Let's come back and see how it looks once it's dry. So that first coat is now fully dry and as predicted, we can still see some of the black underneath because we had to thin it down to get that smooth finish. But it has done what we wanted it to, which is it shrunk down and it's followed the contours. So we have a lovely smooth first coat. So now it's a case of just doing the same again to try and build up to that solid finish. Um, looking at the paint on my palette though, um, it does look like the wet palette has diluted it a little bit more than we wanted it to. It's a little bit too thin. Um, just to be sure though, I'm going to check it on the back of my hand and uh, yeah, that's a little bit too transparent for what I want. So let me go and grab some paint and then we can get cracking on uh, mixing up for the second coat. Okay then, so it's an exact repeat of what we just did for the first coat. So loading up some paint onto my palette. And I'll get a fair amount so I can do a decent coat in one go. Um, and then it's a case of just adding the water to the paint, pulling it down, getting in that movement that we want, and then building it back up to that point where it's no longer able to be heaped up when maximizing that opacity, but still has that movement and it settles. And of course you need to check it on the back of your hand. Right, okay, I think that's actually still a little bit too thick, so I'm just gonna add a little bit more water. Okay, mix that in. And then check that on the back of my hand again and yeah I think that's better it's got no brush marks in it so I think that's gonna be perfect so let's get on to that second coat and that second coat is a repeat of exactly the same process that I just did for the first coat so um, it has the same level of opacity as it did before but this time obviously I'm starting from a slightly more purple base coat so I should be able to build up to a solid finish in just this second coat I think so I'm just applying it all over the model again I've got the speed of paint just right so it's flowing into these recesses and uh, not clogging up any of the details and it's just a case of trying to get a smoother coat on as possible and even coverage across the whole of the model piece Okay, so I know this is just a repeat of the first coat, but I do get quite a few people who ask to see more real-time footage of the painting process. So I'm just gonna leave this running for the next minute or so, uh, and just let you watch me paint for a bit, and then I'll catch you at the end of this coat. Oh, actually it's probably worth mentioning, you might notice there's a few bubbles that are formed as the paint started going into some of those gaps there. They're not a problem and usually they'll just pop on their own accord. But if you do find that you get the odd persistent one, if you just gently blow on them, you'll find that they'll pop quite easily. Okay, I'm going to leave that now and then we can come back and take a look when it's dry. And here is the end result. Obviously not much of a spoiler because we did look at it at the start, but I hope you'll agree that is one nice, clean, smooth base coat of paint. And I hope now that you see a little bit more about the processes that I go through and the characteristics that I look for in achieving that smooth finish. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you have, then please do give it a like. If you'd like to see more of these videos and have any suggestions on videos you'd like me to make, then please do drop a comment below. If you have enjoyed this video, then please do consider hitting that subscribe button and supporting the channel. And don't forget to click the notification bell to be told whenever I post another video. And finally, I'd love it if you stayed on the channel and checked out some more of my videos. So how about improving your edge highlighting? 
or perhaps my latest painting video where you can see the techniques from this video in action.